So this week, Google and Microsoft just made huge announcements. They're going to make a ton of companies obsolete. Today, Microsoft did a live stream where they demoed their new AI play toy called Microsoft 365 Copilot, and it's pretty damn groundbreaking what it's capable of. Now, those of us that have been in the AI space and paying really close attention, we all knew that that announcement was coming from Microsoft and that this stuff was getting rolled into these tools. However, this announcement and this live stream comes on the heels of Google's announcement that they're gonna be rolling in generative AI into their workspace suite of tools. This both happened in the same week. So in this video, I wanna break down Google's announcement from earlier in the week. I also wanna break down Microsoft's live stream from today. And then I wanna talk about why these two companies and what they just did is so disruptive to such a large amount of companies that it's probably gonna put a lot of businesses out of business. Let's get into it. So first, let's talk about Google's big announcement from March 14th, which in itself was a big deal. However, you might also remember March 14th was the day that GPT-4 launched and broke the world. So in their blog post, they talked about how they're bringing generative AI experiences to tools like Gmail, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Meet, and within chat, with the initial rollout happening in Google Docs and Gmail. You're gonna be able to do things inside of a Google Doc, like just tell it to write a paragraph on X topic, and it will just write that paragraph for you. So you'll be able to tell Gmail things like, catch me up on this email conversation. Gmail will then scan the entire conversation and summarize the whole conversation for you. You'll be able to have Gmail automatically write email replies, and you just double check and hit send if it all works out. You'll be able to write briefs on the emails where it pulls in all the details and edits and just makes it look nice for you. It even is going to allow you to build presentations inside of slides where you give it an idea for the presentation or you give it something from your Google Doc that you already created and it will literally create the entire slide presentation for you with copy, with images, with the whole thing. Inside of Google Meet, it will actually take notes for you on the meeting and then summarize the notes for you at the end so you have a quick capture of everything that you need to know that happened inside of that meeting. They're also working their AI directly into Google Sheets. So it'll be able to auto-complete information from cells, create new formulas automatically for you, and use AI to actually categorize things inside of Google Sheets for you. Now again, the first rollout, they're gonna start doing it with just Google Docs and Gmail, and it says they'll be bringing the experience to trusted testers on a rolling basis throughout the year before making them available publicly. Because you know, big corporations can be trusted with this type of power, but us individuals, it's not safe for us yet. And in the beginning rollout, it's just gonna to be in US English to start, but it is gonna roll out in more languages over time. Now, another thing that they do say in this blog post is that the AI-based capabilities get better with human feedback. So they're launching the new experiences to their trusted tester program, and as the AI improves itself, they're going to roll it out to more people and let us normal consumers actually start to get access to it. And that's pretty much the TLDR of everything you need to know about Google's announcement around the Google workspace and its integration of generative AI. Now on March 16th, Microsoft announces Microsoft 365 Copilot. And if you haven't guessed already by what I just explained about what Google just did, Microsoft 365 Copilot is essentially the same thing but within Microsoft's suite of tools. They're building in Copilot into Excel, into Outlook, into Microsoft Word, into Teams meetings, into PowerPoint, into business chat, and pretty much every Microsoft tool Microsoft's ever made, they're just sprinkling some AI into it. Now on their live event today, they talked about how Copilot is going to be added in two different ways. One, they're going to basically add AI features into pretty much every single Microsoft tool, and number two, there's gonna be Microsoft Business Chat, imagine chat GPT, but trained on all of your data. So if you have Microsoft Word documents, you have Excel documents, you've got PowerPoint presentations, you've got Outlook emails, it will basically use all of that data from all of those resources and you can chat with that data. And just like Google, it's gonna be inside of Outlook and it will be able to summarize entire email threads for you. It'll be able to summarize long emails for you. It'll be able to automatically write replies for you and basically improve your workflow inside of email. They're also adding it to Microsoft Word in very similar ways where 
It will auto write paragraphs for you. You can have it rewrite sentences for you. It can make complete PowerPoint presentations for you by pulling in data from a Microsoft Word document or from an Excel spreadsheet, or even from notes that it automatically took for you on meetings. It will pull all of that and create a slide presentation for you complete with speaker notes. So if you need to use it for a pitch presentation, it will actually even do those speaker notes for you. They're adding it directly inside of Excel where you can build out a spreadsheet and have it automatically write formulas for you. Or you can have it look at the entire spreadsheet and analyze data for you or look at the spreadsheet and create graphs for you based on what it sees on the spreadsheet. Basically automating all of the data analysis of what you actually add into the spreadsheet. If you do meetings inside of Microsoft Teams, it will actually take notes on those meetings, summarize the meetings for you, make sure that there's no unanswered questions from the meeting. It will even watch the chat for you and tell you if there's anything that you missed from the chat that you haven't responded to yet and just automates a whole lot of the processes of meetings so you could focus on the conversation as opposed to focusing on the chat or taking notes on the conversation. And then, like I mentioned, they also introduced business chat, which is essentially a chat bot that looks at all of your Microsoft data. So it will look at your Excel spreadsheets. It'll look at your Microsoft Word files. It'll look at your Outlook emails. It'll look at your PowerPoint presentations. It'll look at your team meeting notes. It will look at all of this information and embed that information into a chat so that you can essentially have a chat with all of your business's data across all of the Microsoft tools, which in and of itself is also pretty damn groundbreaking. So if we're looking at what Google just rolled out and we're looking at what Microsoft just rolled out, Microsoft's looks a little bit cooler, but you know, we haven't seen either one of them ourselves yet. And similar to Google, it says we're currently testing Microsoft 365 Copilot with 20 customers, including eight in Fortune 500 companies. We will be expanding these previews to customers more broadly in the coming months. So once again, Microsoft, just like Google is saying, oh, we're giving it to some of the people that we trust and eventually we're going to give it to everybody else. We'll let you know more later. We don't have our hands on the new AI inside of Google Workspace yet. We can't get our hands on the new Microsoft 365 Copilot yet. Both are just working with trusted partners right now, and hopefully they'll be rolling it out to the world for anybody to use fairly quickly. Now let's talk about why this is so disruptive. There are so many tools out there right now that basically are features of what Google and Microsoft are putting into their platforms that pretty much every everybody's already using. So if you're already using the Google Workspace suite of tools, or if you're already using the Microsoft Office suite of tools, you're gonna be able to cancel a lot of these various AI tools that you're using. So for example, if I come over here to Future Tools, and I click into the copywriting, there's 135 tools that do copywriting for you. I can just scroll and this list is nearly endless of how many tools are out there that will write copy for you, for your emails, for your sales letters, for your resumes or cover letters or SEO content for your blog, all of that kind of stuff. There is so many tools out there. A whole industry has popped up for that style of tool. And now Google and Microsoft are going, yeah, we're just gonna build that into the tools that you're already using. That could potentially wipe out a whole industry that sprouted up from this. If I type in sheet, it found 21 tools that do things with Google Sheets or Excel formulas. All of these tools, they're probably gonna be obsolete once Google and Microsoft roll out their tools to everybody. Let's look at uh, slides. Look at this, 17 different tools out there that work with creating slides for you. And unless they can find some sort of unique selling proposition where they do something that Google or Microsoft can't do for you, a lot of these companies are gonna be in trouble. We're entering this whole new world where all of this AI stuff is coming really, really, really fast and everybody's trying to get their piece of it and build these software companies around these tools and, and build something cool on top of it. But then the big players, the Googles, the Microsofts, the Amazons, the Apples, the Metas, all of these companies can just easily sweep in and say, you built a whole tool around a feature that we're just gonna build into something we've already got anyway. Now I'm not saying all of them will get wiped out, but the ones that don't figure out how to build some sort of moat around their business, the ones that don't figure out how to build some way to differentiate themselves from what someone can just get inside of Google or Microsoft anyway, those companies are in big trouble. There's not many SaaS companies that are gonna sprout up these days that are safe from the big companies like Google and Microsoft just coming in and saying, well, we do that now too. 
Either way, it's going to be interesting to watch how it plays out. I'm rooting for the small companies. I want to see some of them find really unique ways to stay relevant in the new world of Microsoft and Google building AI into everything. I want to see these moats get built around these companies. I want to see creativity really pop up from a lot of these software companies. Fairly soon, gone are the days where companies can go and charge $100 a month and say, we write your copy for you or charge 50 bucks a month and say, hey, we manage your email for you with AI. I'm looking forward to the new innovation and inspiration that it brings to companies. Hopefully some of these companies aren't completely pounded into the ground. I know a lot will be. Hopefully the really innovative ones that create some unique way to make themselves stand out really shine. And that's what I'm looking for in the AI space right now. I'm excited to see what springs up out of this and what sort of new innovations the little guys can do. So that's all I got for you today. A big, big week this week with GPT-4, Microsoft, and Google all having huge announcements. And I don't think next week's gonna slow down, if I'm honest. Lots of cool stuff coming. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this breakdown of everything that's going on in the Google-Microsoft war right now and how they are kind of stomping on all the small businesses that are trying to spring up with little SaaS ideas. We'll see how it plays out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe press the subscribe button to make sure you see more of them. And if you haven't already, head on over to futuretools.io, click the button to join the free newsletter. Every Friday, I send my five coolest tools that I came across on Future Tools, a handful of news articles, a handful of YouTube videos, and one cool way to make money with AI. It's totally free. I send it every Friday. It's basically the TLDR of the week in AI, and boy, this week was a big one. So excited to see what the next several weeks and months bring in the generative AI space. This stuff is just picking up at a rapid pace. And if you're on the newsletter and you're following my YouTube, I'm gonna do my best to keep you up with it. So thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.